Right. We will now move on to thanks, um, Gail. We'll move on to um, item 14 now, so CCHL um, half year report. Um, and we have Abby, Abby, Paul, and Tony are presenting. I congratulate Gail on his new appointment. It's been released. I did on your behalf before. It's been released to the Stock Exchange. Yeah. It's public. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I told him before. Welcome again, Abby, to the table. <laughs> Might be less stressful this time. <laughs> Might. Hi, Paul, and hi, um, Tony. So, um, come to do uh, the half year report and financial statements. Have you got a presentation you'd like to? Uh, we have. So, so thank you for having us back. I'll just briefly um, speak and then turn the floor over to Paul and Tony. Um, we're obviously here to present our interim report. Um, that's for the period um, up to the end of December, so it's a, it's a fair way back now and unfortunately kind of prior to my time with CCHL, but I'm um, capably accompanied by Tony and Paul who have uh, all of the answers to any questions that you might have. So I'm going to hand over to them and Tony has a presentation. Thank you. Thanks, Abby. Uh, so I've got a uh, presentation here. If we can click to the first slide, please. So just to introduce, um, the group profit for the half year was 53, uh, 55.3 million, up from 36.4 in the prior comparative period. Uh, parent profit was 33.3 .3 million, um, up from 29.2. Um, just for this uh, NPAT history slide, um, shows the history of results for the past five half years to December. You can see uh, the impact of border closures and lockdowns on the airport in FY21 and 22, um, and with a flow on impact on the group. Um, and you can see the recovery in FY23, but not yet back to pre-pandemic levels. Um, Orion has been consistently tracking down due to the impact of um, the default price path requirements. Uh, on revenue and a further decline in the current half year due to higher interest and operating costs, along with higher depreciation off the back of the revaluation of the electricity network in FY22. Um, you can also see the impact of the Spencer Henshaw acquisition on Citycare in the current half year um, and growth across the reporting periods in Enable and the Port. Uh, if we switch to the next slide, please. Um, as seen by the graph on the previous slide, uh, the airport as well on the way to recovery, passengers for the half year returned closer to pre-pandemic levels, 92% for domestic passengers and 82% at a total level. Uh, CityCare has acquired, um, obviously acquired Spencer Henshaw on the 2nd of September 22, which delivered above budget performance in the period to December 22. Eco Central's newly upgraded Eco Sort recycling plant was commissioned in December 22, and those of you who are joining next week's Investor Roadshow may get to see it firsthand. Um, all CCHL Group direct employees are paid at or above uh, the living wage. The group is making good progress towards remunerating ongoing contractors um, at the living wage we're not already paid. Um, CCHL has matured further along its integrated reporting journey. The draft SOI due to Council on 30 March is being restructured to better align to annual and integrated report formats. Um, and group greenhouse gas quarterly emissions were first reported to the CCHL board for the quarter ended September 22 and will continue to be reported on a quarterly basis. Note that the first publicly available greenhouse gas reporting will be for FY24 in compliance with external reporting board climate relating disclosure requirements. In terms of key challenges, current and going forward, um, macroeconomic factors continue to impact the group, particularly high inflation, high interest rates and resource constraints. Uh, the impact of uh, the Commerce Commission's default price path requirements on Orion's revenue 
uh, noting that after the end of this five-year uh, DPP period, there will be a wash-up where Orion will essentially be able to claw back um, part of that. Uh, the potential, we, we're looking to understand the potential impact of Three Waters reform on uh, CCHL uh, and subsidiary investment uh, as requirements such as future proofing for anticipated future demand, uh, such as increased electrification on Orion and ensuring subsidiaries meet uh, remain competitive, such as enables fibre uh, competing with 5G. For the presentation, um, happy to take any questions. Short and sweet. No, that was really good. Thank you. Um, I was just wondering what you thought the three waters reform, how that would impact on CCHL. Um, so that's something that uh, will be covered off on Friday, I believe. Is that right, Paul? Well, also, um, what I can say in public is we've done a lot of work in trying to understand the impact uh, of reform. We've made submissions to uh, finance and expenditure uh, select committee considering these matters. Um, uh, the latest submission we made um, was a public submission which will get released in May uh, when the select committee reports back. Um, but we have developed a relatively deep understanding now of the potential impact. We're working constructively with the Department of Internal Affairs and National Transition Unit on uh, trying to develop a better understanding uh, on both sides of that potential impact. Yeah. Okay, thank you. I look forward to hearing more. Does anyone else have any questions? Yanni? Um, in, our state, in our letter of expectation, we were quite clear around um, diversity of um, appointments and also of senior executive remuneration restraint. Are you able just to give us some sense of how you're tracking on that. I believe um, maybe the last time we heard from CCH all the time before, I understood you were doing some sort of diversity report review. Um, and I wondered if that had been complete or when that was likely to be presented. Um, and also quite keen to understand, as I said, around um, uh, what progress has been made in terms of senior executive remuneration restraint. I can answer the piece about the remuneration restraint. So that's going to be reported, um, that's reported annually. Uh, so that will be available in uh, the subsidiary annual reports, which will come out towards the end of the year. A number of new CEOs appointed in the meantime. There's no sense that we can get around the trend or the high level. Uh, the, you know, the, yeah, not public information, so they'll be reported as a appropriate in annual reports. Um, you're right, the, the letter of expectation is very clear um, in what you want to see. Uh, that is communicated to the subsidiaries. We expect the subsidiaries to respond to that um, in the draft SOI process, um, which you'll start to see the first versions of that from March the 30th. I am going to caveat by saying we're in a really tight labour market um, and uh, our subsidiaries need to be able to respond to those market conditions. So, that, so when that expectation was created, it was quite a different labour market. Um, and uh, it is going to be challenging to uh, not necessarily make restraint in terms of closing the gap in terms of percentage increases. Um, so that could change. But if we, if I just picked numbers, uh, saw a 5% increase in average wages across the lower paid workers in our workforce and a 2% increase in senior management wages, in absolute terms, that gap would widen. Um, but that is just the nature of the labour market at the moment. Um, what we've asked for in our letter expectations to the sub is that they demonstrate the medium term commitment to pay restraint. Great. Thanks. I think that answers that. Um, I'm happy to move. Second, Mark? All right. Um, is there any further questions or anything? No. Answer on the diversity review. We can ask you to come and speak to us about that at a later point. Yanni's talking about the subsidiaries, the director appointments on the subsidiaries diversity report that was done about, in fairness, Yanni's correct, it was raised about a year ago. I think you did it about a year, 18 months ago. So it's just whether, uh, I don't think we, the council ever received that. I can, I'm happy to pick that up. I'm, I'm not sure it's there. We've certainly got reporting in the, um, in the half year report that indicates um, 
uh, female directorship um, numbers, so that's seen a 2% yeah, increase. Correct, yeah. um, so I, I hear what you're saying, and we will come back on the diversity. Paul, I think Paul Munro was here. He, he should know about it. Um, be aware of it. I and we'll I think they've done the work on the gender. They've said that they'll come yeah. back. So yeah, appreciate so, that. Yeah. All right. Um, all those, we've got mover and seconder. Um, so all those in favour say aye. Aye. Against. Tensions carried. Great. Thank you for coming in. And um, have you got a rush to get out of here by 12.30? Is that right? Uh, we, right. Steve does. Yeah. <laughs> but they were we, we've we got Investor Roadshows today for our bond okay. issues. Yeah. Yeah. So we just got one paper that we're hoping to start, shouldn't take too long before we go into PX because that way we don't have to come back and forth. So um, we're hoping that the next paper that Linda's doing shouldn't take very long. Okay. Is that all right? I'll go back and forth. So uh, 